The goal of this video is to set up a desert environment in Unity using Unity's terrain functionality as well as setting up the sand or desert material in another application called Blender. To start, I'm going to right click in the hierarchy, add a 3D object terrain, I'll name it test. Now on this terrain, there's a couple options in the inspector. I can create neighbor terrains or paint the texture. And within the paint texture, I'm going to select raise or lower terrain, select one of the built-in brush tools, select a size and opacity, and start painting height onto the terrain. So I can actually hold shift and left click to lower the terrain or just left click to raise the terrain. So Unity comes with a good number of built-in brushes. There's also extensions available on the Unity Asset Store to have even more brushes, but for the point of this video, I'm just going to use the built-in brush tools. So after using a number of these tools to start to build in some height into the terrain, I'm actually gonna drag the object into a project folder and that creates a prefab. Now instead of using this test prefab that I just created, I'm actually going to use one that I created before uh, called terrain underscore desert. I can actually take the brush and add a little bit more detail to this, but you'll notice that there's no texture on it right now. So that's where Blender comes in in order to create a texture for this. So I'm going to open up Blender. I'm going to change the view down below to be Shader Editor. I'm going to delete the cube and add a plane. Hit 7 on the numpad and then change the view to viewport shading so I can actually see what material. I'm going to add a material. Just call it Sand Material. Then within the nodes I'm going to delete the principal BSDF and add a diffuse BSDF, the search bar, and then just typing in what the node's called. So I'm going to add a color ramp, as well as a mix RGB. Link the mix RGB and add a color. I'm going to add a sand color. And then for the color two, I'm actually going to use the eyedropper to sample that color and then change the shade on it to be a little bit different. So I'm gonna link the color ramp and bring in both of those values more towards the center. I'm going to add a noise texture to add the graininess of sand. And then add a mapping node and a texture coordinate node. So that's for the color. Now I need to add a bump node and link that to the normal of the diffuse. And then I'm actually going to add a wave texture to get the waviness of sand that you'll see in desert environments. I'm going to take the texture and mapping nodes Hit Shift D to duplicate those and attach it to the wave texture and attach the wave texture to the height of that bump node. I'm actually going to add another bump to that bump and then take the noise textures back and attach it to the height of the second bump. So now I need to change some of the values in here. So I'm going to up the scale and detail of the noise texture. I'm going to increase some of the values on the wave texture as well. A lot of times in Blender, it all comes down to changing the different values on the textures or other nodes until the material looks how you want it to. So that's not quite right, so we're going to make a few more adjustments. So reviewing each of these, I'm actually going to take the distance on the bump and change both of them to 0 0.05, and that's starting to look a lot more like sand. I'm going to slightly adjust the color ramp value. 
Noise texture I think is good at 316. No changes needed on anything else. I'm actually gonna change the texture coordinate to be generated instead of object and the scale to be two. And I think that looks good. I think that's about everything that we want for our sand material. I'm actually gonna change the detail roughness, increase that a little bit. So now the next thing we need to do is get this material into Unity. So in order to do that, I'm gonna create two additional nodes. They're both gonna be image textures. These image textures, one is going to be for the diffuse, so I'll call it sand diffuse. I'll keep all the other values the same and hit okay. And then sand normal. So we're gonna get the diffuse and normal values. So we're gonna go up to render properties change the render engine to cycles. It's optional, but I'm going to change the device to GPU compute, which is a bit faster for baking the textures. I'm gonna change the render value to match the viewport value. Again, that's optional. The higher the value, the more detail you get, but 32 is usually sufficient. I'm gonna go down to the bake section, and I'm gonna change the bake type to diffuse. Make sure you've selected the diffuse node in your material. I'm going to uncheck direct and indirect lighting because we just want the color and select, before I select bake actually, I'm going to drag open a new window, change it to either UV or image editor, and then select that image and then click bake. And it'll take a minute to bake the texture or the color of this material onto this sand diffuse image. So now that it has baked that, you can save the image wherever you want and then do the same process for the normal, except change the bake type to normal and select bake. And this will bake the normal image. Again, it takes a minute, even if you're using GPU compute. So once that's done, you're going to save that image and then go back to Unity and import both of those images. You can just drag and drop from your file folder into whatever folder you want. I already did that. So there's a sand diffuse and normal. I'm going to create a new material called sand material. This is optional, but it's a good way to see what the material actually looks like. I'm gonna drag the diffuse onto the albedo and the normal onto the normal. And now you can see in the bottom right what that sand material will look like. And you can actually drag that sand material onto any 3D object, but not actually the terrain. For the terrain, we're going to set up not a material, but a layer. So in order to do that, we're going to go back to the prefab, the terrain underscore desert prefab, open it up, it's already open. And then I actually have a missing terrain layer. You probably won't have that, but I'm gonna create a new layer using the diffuse, and that'll create a new layer and then I'm actually going to go and rename that layer to sand layer and then move it to a different folder to that desert folder. So now it's there. I can open it up, drag over the normal value and then change the tile settings. I just double them to four by four. Now that should actually just update the entire terrain. However, I have a missing layer so I'm going to go onto that missing layer and then remove it. And now you can see I have the entire desert covered in that sand material. So if I go back to Unity, I can see the entire map. And that's it.